four-month-old boy is brought to your office by his parents who report that the child has been inconsolable for the past two weeks. Upon extensive workup, you note that the child has neurodegeneration, hepatosplenomegaly, and a cherry red spot upon fundus funduscopic exam. Which of the following substrates will accumulate in the cells of this patient? Okay, so in, a, in order to be able to answer this question, you have to obviously know which disease the question stem is hinting at. And all of these choices from A to E are the substrates that would accumulate in various lysosomal storage diseases. So your knowledge of this question is paramount to you being able to identify what's going to accumulate. So uh, in this example, we're talking about Neiman-Pick disease and Neiman-Pick disease will lead to an accumulation of D, sphingomyelin. Now, if you didn't know that, that's okay, because by the end of this video, you will be able to knock this out of the park. So here's an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. These are lysosomal storage diseases that you have to know for your exam. Not included on this list is metachromatic, dystrophy, metachromatic leukodystrophy. It's the lowest yield of all of these diseases, but it may show up, so you might want to just add some notes uh, after you go through this video. But the ones that we're going to be talking about today are Febreze disease, Gaucher's disease, Tay-Sachs, Neiman-Pick, Crabs disease, Hunter's disease, and Hurler's disease. So I'm going to go through and dedicate one slide to each of them and what I'm going to do is give you the normal, right, the overview of the enzyme that doesn't work and the accumulating substrate that builds up and I'm going to give you one sentence that if you memorize that one sentence, that's the mnemonic, this one sentence, it will clue you in about everything you need to know on test day. So by the end of this video, you'll have six sentences, seven sentences that will just give you every possible question that you'll get on test day. So let's get started with Febreze disease. So the enzyme that doesn't work is alpha-galactosidase A and the building, uh, the substrate that accumulates or the buildup is ceramide trihexoside. Now this is definitely a mouthful. So the mnemonic here is, my favorite activity is ceramics. We made a galaxy. So if you ever went to like summer camp and you had a ceramics period, you often made just whatever. I remember making a globe or like a ceramics project of the earth once and here's a little picture to remind you of that. But the sentence uh, clues you into everything you need to know. Favorite tells you that we're talking about Febreze disease. Ceramics tells you that we're talking about a buildup of ceramide trihexoside. And we made a galaxy tells you about alpha galacto or galaxy galactosidase. Now I capitalize the X when I write this down on paper because that reminds me that Febreze disease is the X-linked uh, inheritance in the lysosomal storage diseases. There are two of them that you have to know. Febri is one of them, and we'll talk about the other one as we go. But again, my favorite activity is ceramics. We made a galaxy. Okay, we're going to move on now. Gaucher's disease. The enzyme that doesn't work is glucocerebrosidase. The buildup or the accumulating substrate is glucocerebrosidase, so kind of easier. And then the mnemonic is, in a crying voice, you have to say, oh my gosh, he's such a bro. So gosh is Gaucher's disease and bro is glucocerebroside or glucocerebrosidase. It clues you into both. And the reason that we have to say this in a crying voice is because there's a special histology associated with this and that is um, a tissue paper cytoplasm. I've included a picture of the cell that's said to have tissue paper cytoplasm. So if you say it in a crying voice, it'll remind you of like tissue paper that you use to wipe away your tears. So oh my gosh, he's such a bro. That's Gaucher's disease. Next is Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is the first of two diseases that we're about to talk about that feature a cherry red spot on the macula. That's a very high yield finding. It's just something that you have to memorize. But anyway, the enzyme that doesn't work is hexosaminidase A, and the buildup is GM2 gangliocide. Now, don't worry. There's a very simple mnemonic for this. We're going to say a gang of six small Jews. Now the way that this works is Tay-Sachs is classically a disease associated with Ashkenazi Jews. That's probably something that you already know, but if it isn't, you need to memorize that. So a gang of six small Jews. Gang clues us into gangliocide, and six clues us into hex, the prefix of hexosaminidase. Hex means six, so a gang of six small Jews. The word small clues us into the fact that there is no hepatosplenomegaly associated with Tay-Sachs disease, and that is very high yield because it differentiates it from our next disease, which is Neiman-Pick. Neiman-Pick also features a cherry red spot on the macula, which is why you have to be able to differentiate these two based on the finding or absence of hepatosplenomegaly. So the mnemonic for Neiman-Pick is pick your big nose with your sphinger. Now sphingomyelinase and sphingomyelin are what's deficient and what builds up respectively. So pick for Neiman-Pick, your big nose, big, telling you that there's hepatosplenomegaly, i.e. the liver and the spleen get big, and sphinger for sphingomyelin. 
pick your big nose with your finger. So just in review, for Tay-Sachs, it's six small, i.e. no hepatosplenomegaly, but in even pick, it's big nose, i.e. hepatosplenomegaly. Again, both of these have cherry red spots on the macula, and both of these have a very similar presentation, and both of these are in Ashkenazi Jews. So you need to be familiar with them. Next, we have Krabs disease. The enzyme deficiency is beta-galactocerebrosidase, and the buildup is galactocerebroside. Now, what we say is the crab is out of this world. Crab for Krabs disease, obviously, and world for galactocerebroside. So galacto like galaxy and world. Now, it's um, you see a picture here of uh, classic histology associated with Krabs disease. And that's that these are called globoid cells. Now, there's a very easy way to associate this with the mnemonic that I've given you. If you like crabs, like me, you're always trying to get a big glob of crab meat when you crack open the shell. So crab, you want a glob of crab meat, and this is a globoid cell. So you see globoid cell, you think crab's disease, okay? The next and last slide that I have here is Hunter's disease. Now, hunt, both Hunter's disease and Hurler's disease have the same buildup, and it's dermatin sulfate. The difference, and it's a subtle difference, is in the enzyme. For Hunter's disease, it's iduronate sulfatase, and in Hurler's disease, it's l iduronate So the L in Hurler's should clue you into the enzyme that has the L out in front. Now, that's very low yield, but what's high yield to know is that Hunter's disease um, is X-linked. So the mnemonic is X marks the spot. Just think of a hunter hunting, and when he aims his gun at the target, it's X marks the spot. It's an X-linked disease. Additionally, I kind of think of putting the rifle up against your eye. It's touching your skin or your derm atin sulfate. And also, one of the keys to differentiate between hunters and hurlers is that in hunters, there's no cor corneal clouding, whereas in hurler's disease, there is corneal clouding. And that makes sense with the mnemonic because a hunter can't have his cornea being clouded or else he can't hunt. So obviously, Hunter's disease will have no corneal clouding. And differentiating between hunters and hurlers is definitely, it's high yield to know that there's no corneal clouding, similar to with Tay-Sachs and Neiman Pick, we talked about hepatosplenomegaly. So now just in, in conclusion here, the high yields, you need to know the enzyme deficiencies and accumulated substrates for each of the diseases that we went over. You need to know which are X-linked. We said it's Febreze and it's Hunter's. You need to know which ones have a cherry red macula. It's Tay-Sachs and Neiman Pick. And you need to know the special histology associated with Crab's disease and Gaucher's disease. Crab, remember you want that big glob of crab meat. And Gaucher's, you say it in a crying voice because you have tissue paper cytoplasm. Again, not on this list. Metachromatic leukodystrophy, you're going to want to study that one on your own. Not great mnemonics for that one. And it's also low yield, so that's kind of a good thing. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.